All right, guys, so in my last video, I talked about the single servo steering upgrade on the Traxxas Summit. And the way we left it, it was just being powered by the stock ESC voltage, back voltage, which is only five volts. So, and it was better, but it wasn't super good. So today we're gonna to be talking about a back, standalone back just for the steering servos to make it better. And um, first things first, this is not the best solution because the servo can run up to 8.4 volts and this back only goes up to 7.4 volts. So you could get a higher voltage back, but I can't really, the only higher voltage backs I can find are the Castle Creations ones, which are great backs. The only problem is they're not really adjustable without the castle link. So you have to buy the back and then you got to buy their little castle link just to adjust it. So by the time you get it already and adjust it, it's pretty expensive. And this little thing was, I think, 10 bucks or something. I'll post a link in the description like everything else. But All right, so if you look here, it's an 8 amp continuous 12 amp maximum. It's rated for up to 6S LiPo. Apparently it's lowest RF noise, which is a bonus feature, I guess. So it's made by Henge. It's uh, slight. It's got two, three settings over here, actually. Focus. Three settings: five volts, six volts, and seven point four volts, which is adjusted by the jumper. And then on the other side, it's got enable pins, which will just be, well, I'll show you later, but. We don't have to worry about that. Input and output, um, pretty self-explanatory. It is kind of big, which is a little bit of a downside, but other than that, it's pretty much eight amps is more than one servo will ever use. And 7.4 is still a lot more than five volts. It's not quite 8.4 volts, which would really max out the potential of the servo, but for that, you'll need the more expensive castle. And I'm all about cheap but still good upgrades so I'll take off the uh, heat shrink here and we'll look in the manual and go from there all right so I'm looking in the manual here it's a pretty typical Chinese manual just hard to read and complicated but long story short it is a switch mode power supply which is good compared to a linear power supply it's got the most confusing thing about this is the output voltage enable jumper over here. So output voltage enable jumper makes it sound like you have to plug it in to enable. Then if you look down here, output voltage enable port, output off when enable jumper plugged in, output on when enable jumper plug out. So basically you just leave that plug out and it'll work properly. If you plug it in, it just turns it off, I guess. So. That's the only kind of tricky thing. Uh, it's got a little LED light when output is in normal range, so you'll know if it's on, which is good. But other than that, just a little bit of specs and some chinglish. Okay, so I took off the heat shrink here. Uh, these are the so-called output enable voltage jumper pins, whatever. I'll probably just end up unsoldering this because I'm going to waterproof it, so there's no point having pins sticking out. And then you want to keep this little label on, at least until you figure out what you're going to do. In our case, we're going to go 7.4 volts, so I'll just put the jumper there. So you can see these last two pins closest to the wires have to be jumpered. So I'll probably just use some solder to jump that, like I did on my last one. And then we'll be ready to go to do some direct soldering. All right, so all I've done here is remove these three little pins for the enable. And I made a little solder blob on the 7.4 volt setting. Just make sure you avoid the other resistors up there. And then I'll just hook it into my 4S battery. And then we should see 7.4 volts come out of this. Thank you. 
Okay, so a little bit of difficulty with my cheap meter, but as you can see, 7.4 volts.